So here, let's take a look at our sight glass. Uh, pretty simple little thing. If we pop this cover off, we can see the actual glass itself and we can see the refrigerant flowing through there. Right now, there's no refrigerant flowing through there, obviously, uh, but here in the center, we see this little yellow dot. And if we look, we have two options. One we have here and the other one we have the cap. That yellow means wet. Wet doesn't mean wet with liquid, it just simply means wet with moisture. And even though you don't see the H2O moisture, there can be liquid refrigerant. And this one is yellow, so it's wet. There's H2O in there. So this needs to be pulled into a vacuum or dehydrated. And it should be green. That little center dot should be green, meaning there is no H2O. And we look through here, it's either going to be uh, completely clear like this, so there's only vapor inside, or it will be, you'll see bubbles running through, which means there's not a solid column of liquid, or you will be completely clear the other direction, meaning full liquid. This sight glass, when you're brazing in, has to be protected with wet rags or heat absorbing paste, because as soon as you get this too hot, it will break this glass or the glass seal there. It's pretty thick glass, but still it can be damaged by heat. So this sight glass on a refrigeration cycle, anywhere in the liquid, and even up to our metering device. So this sight glass, so we got a few things we got to understand about it. Sight glass can be very useful for refrigeration, but for residential air conditioning, it's not as much. And the reason is, for a few terms, is even though you have a solid column of liquid right here, doesn't mean that you would have enough subcooling in the unit for the manufacturer specifications. So it may say, you may see that it's solid, a uh, solid column of liquid, but you don't have enough subcooling. So we can't use it for that. Now in residential, it's still beneficial for the fact that we have this moisture indicator. So we can see if there's any H2O in the system. Now, if I do install these in residential, I like to put it right before my metering device. And the reason I like it there is because I can tell not only if I have moisture, but also that I have enough subcooled liquid coming over here to my metering device. Remember the metering device meters liquid refrigerant. So even if I have enough subcooling over here, maybe I have a restriction somewhere, maybe the attic's too hot and I'm losing my subcooling, and I can see if I have liquid refrigerant before I get to my metering device. Now with some of the new refrigerants we're using, they have blends of refrigerant. And some of these blends are so close together that you can still have bubbles in the sight glass even though you have enough liquid. So just the fact of this sight glass physically being larger in size as that liquid refrigerant comes in, some of that other higher temperature refrigerants could boil into a vapor. So with some of the new refrigerants with those high glide blends, you could have an issue with, uh, with charging. So you need to check with those instructions on that. Now for commercial systems, we like to see them usually right here. And that is important to know that we have a solid column of liquid coming out. Now it's still not the only thing that determines our charge because just because I have a solid column of liquid coming out doesn't mean I have enough refrigerant in the entire system. For example, it could be a nice cool day and I have liquid refrigerant in my liquid receiver and I have a solid sight glass. But now we get to the midsummer and it's extremely hot outside and I need more refrigerant. I end up could the higher temperature could be pushing all the liquid out of my liquid receiver and you would see the sight glass flashing. So we'd want to make sure we have the proper charge. Ideally by weighing it in, I like to use the liquid receiver method to where I see how much liquid's in my receiver. In other words, I pump all the refrigerant from the system between the compressor and the valve and I see how full my receiver is. I like my receiver to be uh, a little less than 80% full. And if my receiver is at 80% full, I know I have plenty of refrigerant for the whole system through all of the seasons. But the sight glass was a simple way we could go up to refrigeration system and we could say, hey, we have bubbles in there. I immediately know that I do not have enough refrigerant feeding my metering device. Not the only way. It's a great symptom for us to look at. If I see bubbles, I know that I'm having some kind of an issue. Let's go look for it. But it's not the only method of charging. A lot of people got in trouble because they charge simply by the sight glass and either didn't have enough refrigerant in there or maybe there was some other problem going on. So it's a great symptom. I like sight glasses, uh, but they, you do have to know the limitations. And I really like it for more than anything for that moisture indicator. So that's our introduction. Now let's take a look at some live examples. Here we can see another example of a sight glass. Once we start getting moisture here, it starts turning to where it's wet. In other words, that little green dot is going to start changing in color. So right now it's green, it's what we want. If it starts changing to this yellow, then we have some issues. Here we can see another example. This is the twin unit. It's identical to the other unit, but if we look at our sight glass here in the very center, 
that color green is significantly lighter than this color green. It is a lighter color. Now it's not yellow, so it's not full of moisture, but when I see this, this automatically makes me think we have moisture in this system. And that to me is a huge red flag. So what I wanna do is bring this up to the customer and let the customer decide what it is they want to do. Now, the correct result of this would be, I would want to, two things, either A, pull all the refrigerant out into recovery tank, change out our liquid line filter dryer, which in this case is right here, put in a larger liquid line filter dryer, pull a deep vacuum below 500 microns to make sure we have all the moisture out of the system, and then recharge it in the refrigerant. Now, in some cases, refrigerant is getting scarcer and scarcer, and especially with these commercial systems, you have an issue with not being able to get the refrigerant or the cost of it being just too much. So what we can also do is filter the refrigerant as we take it out of the, re out of the unit. We can filter it before it goes into the tank. We can take the tank and make sure we pull a proper vacuum so it's all dehydrated and clean. And then we can filter the refrigerant again when we put it back into our commercial system. We can use that larger filter dryer and we can try to, what we call, dry the system up. Either way, it's, it's quite an expense involved. So sometimes the customer says, hey, it's already an older system, so let's just run it until it dies. And that is completely the customer's choice. So we wanna make sure we give them the options and the information for them to make an informed decision for what works best for them.